hello and welcome uh, today I'll go over a few simple things um, like porosity, effective porosity, density and saturation index calculation from uh, basic um, soil properties uh, most of the time you get uh, some kind of soil analysis and you will have the sample width of the soil and you have a volume of the soil and then from the lab you will also have the dry width of the specimen and sometimes they will give you the dry volume of the specimen now uh, I'm going to use a sample problem from a book Hydrology and Groundwater Modeling by Nathan Krasik and I'm also going to use another problem from another university and, and to check my formulas whether they're working right or wrong. Now, uh, hold on, let me just stop that. Okay. Uh, what you see in yellow in here, this is what you are going to get from the lab. Okay. So, from the lab, I have got the volume of the moist sand specimen as 72 cubic centimeter. Weight of my soil sample is 152 gram. And after the sample was dried for at least 24 hours at 105 degree centigrade, my new volume, VD, which is the dry volume, is 71.2 cc and the dry weight of the specimen is 145 gram now one thing the dry volume of the specimen this number is not used anywhere for the calculation of porosity or void ratio or moisture content saturation index nothing so you pretty much need three things to begin with number one the volume the initial volume initial weight and the dry weight and you also need to know uh, the specific weight for the type of material you are dealing with if it's like a soil uh, typically we would use 2.65 gram per cc and I have another little table over here if you have a silty sand you could use 2.67 or 2.7 if you're using organic clay you could use a different gram per cc and I'll tell you why this this information is important sometimes they may not give you this uh, a specific gravity for the solid you're working with you just have to assume and come up with your number but that's important and that's required to do the calculations that we're gonna do okay so this everything in in that yellow box is coming from the lab and this column which is highlighted with 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 a black background here you can change your data like if you have analysis you can go into this excel spreadsheet and change these numbers and this dry volume of the specimen let me make that italicized this is not used for our calculation but you can use the, this to calculate the volume reduction between the field sample and the dried sample that's all you're going to do and these kind of problems they are usually solved by by the three phase diagrams and if you look at this diagram which I also put it into a different uh, tab over here so this is the three phase diagram what it's saying your sample is composed of a solid phase a water phase and and some air space and the total volume the volume that's reported before it, it, it's, it was dried is the total volume which is VT and VT is composed of volume of the solid volume of the water and volume of the air and so the void space in your sample is composed of volume of water and volume of air now look at the weight total weight is the to is the weight before it's the sample was dried so it's just a field sample 
and the total total weight of the sample is is made up of the total weight of the solid phase total weight of the water and here we just assume that it's zero there is no way so let's go back to our calculation spreadsheet so w once I have this data I like to create uh, our general table uh, with, with with parameters that we are going to use to calculate porosity, void ratio, moisture content, saturation index and etc etc so what I have here it's a basic parameters to calculate before estimating, estimating anything else so I have this pink rows there for the weight of the sample and this kind of oranges uh, rows there for the volume of your samples so let's see what I have I have the total weight of the sample which is the initial weight which is 152 if you go back this is the weight of the specimen 152 then weight of the solids this is so when you dry your sample you are removing your water so you end up with your with your weight of the solid only so that's 145 grams here is 145 grams so what is the weight of water so what you what you what you have lost when you dry the sample is water so 152 minus 145 gives you 7 so you so weight of the water is 7 gram so your dry sample is 145 if you add 7 grams of grams of water you 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 should get 152 and weight of the air it's not used for any calculation but it's assumed to be zero now total volume of the sample VT it's it's given it's coming from the lab it's 72.5 cubic centimeter now we have to figure out the volume of the solids now here it's kind of tricky and you have to assume something for the specific gravity or the density of the solid I have a spelling mistake here Let me fix that okay we got it so in here we are using 2.65 gram per cc so and your volume is weight divided by density and our weight of the solid is 145.00 so that divided by 2.65 so if you want to check it real quick 145 divided by 2.65 that gives you 54.72 okay now next thing is the volume of the voids so if you know your volume of the solids and you know the total volume you just subtract your total volume of solids from the total volume of the sample to get your volume of the voids so what I did is just subtracted 52.72 from 72.5 to get 17.78 okay now volume of the pore space with water or in simple simple words volume of water so we already knew our weight of the sample which is 7 and we know the density of the water is 1 gram per cc so the volume of water is 7 so now we know the total volume void volume we know the total volume of the water so the total volume of air within our sample is 17.78 minus 7 that gives you 10.78 cc okay now we have everything that we need to do our porosity and void ratio and all those calculations and before I do that sometimes uh, they will ask for a specific weight of the sample or dry specific weight of the sample sometimes they'll call density or bulk density and even sometimes they'll call it specific gravity or dry specific gravity one thing to note is whenever you have the specific word attached to those there is no unit so it's always a ratio so there is no unit only the densities they will have ratios and it depends on which which uh, unit unit you're working on if you see uh, SI unit or you should have gram per cc okay uh, so now you have everything that you need let's go and do our calculations like for the porosity of the sample 
it's we know it's the volume of the void over the total volume let's make that be t so that's uh, volume of the void so 17.78 divided by 72.5 that gives you 0.25 or if you make it in percentage it's 24.53 percent is your porosity now your void ratio is the volume of void divided by volume of solids and that's 0.33 and that you get from volume of volume of void is 17.78 divided by 54.72 that should give you this number now there is another equation to calculate the void ratio which is uh, which is n divided by 1 over 1 minus n that also gives you 0.33 so that's another check to make sure that you're getting the right, right number and in, in here I, I would like to make one comment your void ratio is always going to be higher than your porosity and actually your void ratio could even be higher than one whether your porosity can never be greater than one okay the moisture content is w w that means uh, weight of the water divided by weight of the solid and that gives you 0.5 and you can you can do it weight of water is 7 weight of solid is 145 if you use these numbers you get this and saturation index is is about the volume so it's volume of water divided by volume of void so you go to find your volume of water which is 7 and volume of void which is 17.78 that gives you 0.25 or 24.53 now all that is good one thing uh, well here you can also check your porosity number using this formula if you once you calculate it, once you calculate your void ratio you can use the formula to calculate your porosity okay now to calculate the effective porosity this test is not not enough this information is not enough so what we need to do and what people do is they do a water displacement test let's make a different highlight for that okay and that is required to calculate the effective porosity the first step is to dry the sample and then submerge the sample into a known volume of container I mean containing water pretty much say we are we are going to submerge the dry sample into a 500 cc container okay and make sure the chamber is sealed so that there is no water loss due to evaporation okay and then just just left your sample inside your container until it's completely uh, saturated once it's saturated remove your sample and check the volume of the remaining water in the container and if you do that say we started with a 500 cc container and once the sample is completely saturated we have 483.5 cc of water left so that means if you subtract this to you get 16.5 so that much of water is now uh, used for to saturate the sample now you can get the effective porosity what what that would be 16.5 divided by total volume of the sample which is 72.5 so if you divide 16.5 divided by 72.5 you should get 22.76 percent now let's go and check what's our number for the for the porosity it's 24.53 what's for the effective porosity it's 22.76 and so we know it's all good effective porosity must always be less than your total porosity because effective porosity only means uh, only accounts for the voids which are connected and allows the free flow of fluids so you can use this uh, spreadsheet to to get your numbers for all those different parameters and what I did I used two different references and you can go to these links and the book I used you can also buy it from Amazon uh, the phase diagrams and few common formulas I put it in uh, uh, in this tab right here called the phase diagram and sometimes they'll ask for the unit weights and I, I have some other 
formulas in here too then one page for various relationships between you know your uh, porosity void ratio specific density and all that and here the author information page you have my information this is Ankan Bashu I'm a, a geologist and hydrogeologist and next what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bring in uh, one presentation here and it's actually I just did a Google search and it's a soil mechanics and foundation class uh, yukon.edu and in here he's talking about the weight and volume relationship and he has a problem at the end let me go to that page that uh, here we go in this example you see he's asking that determine moisture content void ratio porosity and degree of saturation of a soil core sample and also determine the dry density or dry unit density he has given weight of the soil sample which is 1013 gram volume of the soil sample 585.0 specific gravity of, of your soil sample is 2.65 gram per cc or it's actually 2.65 specific gravity it's unit less and dry weight of the soil is 904 gram okay now let's go back to uh, my spreadsheet that I did w what I did I just right click on this page and create a uh, click on move or copy then did create a copy to the very end and this is what it, cr it, it created another exact copy of this first tab and in this one I changed these three parameters right over here I changed it to volume of the origin sample to be 585 weight to be 1013 and dry weight to be 1904 and see in this space he did not provide any information for the volume of the dry specimen so I'm putting dry not provided but it did not affect any of our calculations see there is no weird excel stuff going on that means this cell is not used for any of these calculations at all now let's go over here I have a 41.7 porosity and if you go back to his presentation uh, let's see here is the porosity he, he has 41.7 and let's check another one moisture content he has 12.1 and I have 12.1 uh, say a void ratio I have 0.715 or 0.72 he has void ratio 0.715 so and the dry uh, unit density is 1.55 let's check that too dry density should be in here dry specific weight of the sample or bulk density or the dry density is 1.55 so we know that our spreadsheet is correct and you can use it just remember to read the terms and conditions and you are just feel free to shoot me an email and if you have any questions uh, thank you very much for listening to this video and I hope this uh, would help you to do your analysis of your chart and I'm going to put this spreadsheet in my website coldgeology.com and uh, let me go to the page where I'm going to put this thing if you go to coldgeology.com slash tools T -O -O -L -S, then you have this spreadsheet solution for porosity effective porosity density and saturation index and just click on this and you can download it and modify it, edit it, do whatever you like. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon.